In this video, we will be talking about strong backs. And a strong back is nothing more than a piece of wood that is used to prevent another piece of wood from moving or moving as much. So a strong back in this case that's used in a garage with rafter ties is going to do two things. It's going to prevent the rafter type from moving to the right or the left, and in some cases prevent it from sagging too much. You know, if you just have a 20 foot long two by four and you just put it up in your garage, wouldn't be hard to imagine this two by four sagging in the middle, you know, kind of the weight of it, the board is just gonna force it down with the strong back that's going to help you know because the strong back can actually sag you know if you have a 20 foot by 20 foot garage 20 foot long two by four in this direction 20 foot long two by four in this direction there's a good chance that in the middle of the garage it's going to be sagging especially if you store stuff up there also so one way that you can connect them together would be through some building hardware like this i believe these are hurricane ties Something like this would work out great and give it a nice tight connection. Something like this, you know, might work fine. You know, I think I would use the other method, but again, I'm just kind of throwing this out there. This looks like it will work. And of course, this is actually the most common method you're going to find. And that would be a carpenter just simply driving a nail, a 16D nail on each side of the collar tie into the rafter tie and you're probably thinking this this isn't going to do much but if we take a look at it through an x-ray uh, view you can see here where it kind of creates something that isn't going to allow a lot of movement and i'm not saying that these that the rafter ties can't separate from the strong backs not saying that at all i've seen them i've seen them separate too many times but this method right here kind of creating a crisscross does create a nice connection and and again i've came i've worked on a lot of houses and that have had situations exactly like this and you'll see one of the rafter ties is separated about a half inch or something from the collar tie and the one next to it is still tight you know so if you have a situation like this you might have one or two that have separated a half of an inch and the rest of them are still tight to the board. So they, it, it is a good connection. It's just not going to be as good of a connection as using a hurricane tie. Now, if you are looking for something a little stronger, then use a larger piece of wood. You know, here we have a two by six instead of a two by four. This is going to give you, provide you with, you know, a little more strength if you're worried about the board's ceiling joists or the rafter ties sagging down. This isn't going to provide you with much of a difference to prevent the um, ceiling joist from moving right to left kind of a thing. And that should make sense. Now, if you have a big sag in the ceiling, and again, this wouldn't be something you would probably need for rafter ties, but if you have ceiling joist, then a beam, a larger piece of wood is probably going to be a little better than a smaller piece of wood. And again, you can always, you know, you can double these up. You can use, you know, depending upon the span. If you have a 20 foot span, then you might need something like a four by 10. You know, I think here I have a four by eight and I'm just kind of giving you an idea how you can use a hanger to connect it over here to if you had a situation like this. And of course, if you use a large enough beam for your strong back, and of course, this might not be referred to as a strong back anymore. It might be a, a structural beam. Then you could always use it to support the roof if you're having problems with the roof rafter sagging. And that might be a more common situation in a building with two by four roof rafters or even longer spans with two by six roof rafters. And in our last example, I will show you how a strong back can be used to replace blocking in a two by four floor truss system like we have here. And I know a lot of people think they can put a board in here and I'm not saying you can't. And you know, it's gonna prevent the floor trusses from sagging and I just don't buy it. You know, it uh, might help a little, but I don't know how much it would really help in the end. And of course it would all depend upon the situation. You know, if you have a floor truss like we have here, I think we're looking at 30 foot wide 
you know, you put a two by four down the center, I don't think it's going to be doing much. You know, if it's a floor truss that's, you know, 10 foot wide and you put a two by 12 down the center of something like this it might make a difference. So I hope that makes sense. Other than that, the two by four or whatever you're using for your strong back. And again, these are blocking instead of blocking the trusses these are going to prevent them from moving to from the right or the left kind of a thing and uh, and they actually would if you didn't put them in you're going to have them turning you know the bottom of it could actually turn to the right or turn to the left i've seen that happen before so and again I always check with the product manufacturer before you know thinking that everything I say in all of my videos is going to work for every single project probably not going to happen and here we have the strong backs lapping and some of them you might need to lap on lap them a little farther they might need to connect to three or four trusses and here I just have them lapping to to one on each side kind of a thing so that is it for the video by now you should have a pretty good idea what a strong back is used for we normally see them in ceilings that is going to be the number one use for them but as I suggested in the video they can be used make them a little larger and if you can you know a hip roof is also going to create problems for you with your strong backs because you're not going to be able to set them you might you might have to connect it to a rafter where you won't be able to set it on top of a wall and then that's going to be creating more of an issue for the roof rafter you know when you start putting a lot of weight on it so larger boards you know if you're going to flatten out a ceiling you know you got a plastered ceiling with two by fours or two by six and you want to flatten it out you might need you know just a two by six just might not cut it especially on larger spans a span over 12 feet you know you might need a two by eight something like that or or two two by eights nailed together or four by eight and thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area